Teresa Rohr is our first speaker. She's the executive director of the National Women's Center at Indiana University School of Medicine. And she's going to tell us why doctors are not telepathic. Thank you. <laughs> well, the topic for today is 24-hour diet recall. <laughs> and I'm going to make this point, hopefully by the end of the talk, that every time we see a patient, whether it's for a follow-up, whether it's for an urgent visit or in the emergency room, we ask them just very quickly and briefly in the last 24 hours, what did you have to eat? It's simple, it's focused, it doesn't take a lot of time and effort. In the last 24 hours, what did you have to eat? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. How many servings of milk or dairy did you have? How many drinks did you have? What were those drinks? And in a week, how often do you go out for fast food? I'm gonna hopefully make you believe that just with these questions, you will save the healthcare industry millions upon millions of dollars and save you tons of time and additional testing. Well, why, pediatrician? Is your child a good eater? Oh, yes, doctor. We're thinking, yes, doctor, she's eating all those salads. Mom says, yes, doctor, she's a good eater. She, puts what, she eats whatever I put in front of her. <laughs> Sometimes what mom puts in front of you is not necessarily what you should be eating. Do you follow your low salt diet? Oh yes, doctor, I never put salt in anything. What did you have to eat yesterday? Kimchi. Oh, kimchi, isn't that pickled? Well, I don't know. So we actually looked it up online and showed how to make kimchi. Kimchi is a pickled cabbage. It's just like eating pickles, pickled cucumbers. But doctor, I didn't put any salt in anything. What did you have to eat yesterday? For breakfast, bacon and grits. Add on another medication or take away a food product. Are you keeping to your diabetic diet? Oh yes, doctor, I just have a treat every now and again. Mug and Bug is a very famous restaurant in um, Indianapolis. Big, huge root beers, big, huge hamburgers, great big fries. Well, and how often do you go? Well, about four times a week. 50. So are you keeping to your diabetic diet? One of my patients, just after she came back from the endocrinologist, all of a sudden now, her sugars are well controlled. I said, how, how did that happen? What did they do? I'm looking for some magic, some miracle. When I first diagnosed her with diabetes, she was drinking nine sodas a day. She was swearing to me that she was, not, she was keeping to her diabetic diet and was not doing anything. How did that endocrinologist be able to, to fix your, your diabetes for you? Oh, I stopped drinking the sodas. I, I thought you stopped drinking them when I told you to. Well, you know, they were a little bit more important than you, I guess. So this 17-year-old came into the office with her little baby who had been in the ICU for three months with spina bifida very high level of spina bifida. The 17-year-old was otherwise healthy. She was obese, and this had been her first pregnancy. Can you imagine when I asked her, tell me what you had to eat yesterday? Spaghetti, honey buns, sunny D, and juice. Oh, what kind of juice? Hawaiian punch. Did you know that Hawaiian punch really isn't juice? There's actually no juice in there. So, so why did her baby have spina bifida? Because when I said, how many fruits and vegetables do you eat in the course of a day? Oh, they're nasty. They're nasty. We know that lack of folic acid is the reason for spina bifida and that having women of childbearing age getting in enough folic acid helps decrease the incidence of spina bifida. But if you don't eat your vegetables or your fruit and they're all nasty, that's what's gonna happen is three months in the ICU. Picky eaters are never picky about honey buns. <laughs> True? You do never see a picky eater that only eats fruits and vegetables. Picky eaters, by and large, are carbs and sugars, and they just don't like the other stuff. Now, one of the things we do in our eating disorder unit is that every person gets one dislike. And so I, I use that at home. You get one dislike. 
I don't care what it is, but you pick that dislike. And you don't get to change that dislike every week. So Gracie does not like bananas, my daughter. Fine. James does not like carrots. That's fine. That's his dislike. If I make a meal that has carrots in them, he can take them out. Is that better? No. Sounds like... Oh, well. If I make a meal that has carrots in him, he can take them out. Other than that, he's got to eat them. So you get one dislike. For all your picky eaters, that's it. Because what happens then is the picky eaters become picky adults. And the picky adults will have problems when... Have you had a, a picky adult eater who can't come to resident rounds because they're not sure what the food is going to be? So they miss out on meetings, they miss out on lectures because they're not sure what's going to be served. They're afraid that there's going to be a fruit or a vegetable on the list. Can you imagine a pediatrician who's a picky eater who won't eat fruits and vegetables? How are they going to encourage their patients then too? No, it's not going to work. Picky eaters have to be taken care of early and gotten taken out of the system um, so that we don't want to develop those kinds of eaters later on in life. So let me give you a couple of examples. This 16-year-old. 16-year-old with stomach pain. Horrible stomach pain. It's been going on for three to four months. It's getting worse and worse and worse. So, my telepathic mind says, and how many Flamin' Hot Cheetos and Mountain Dew do you eat every day? How did you know? Like, how fantastic am I that I know that? Absolutely. Because that's what they're doing. So rather than starting him on Prilosec, rather than doing the EGD, rather than testing them for H. pylori, ask them, what did you have to eat yesterday? Just one or two more. This is a 23-year-old. She came in with palpitations, chest tightness. She's in the emergency room. Her, heart, her blood pressure is okay, but her heart rate was up to over 200 beats per minute. Why? Why? Any guesses? Her AKG showed SVT. What was it? What did you say? Caffeine. You are right. The most common reason for young adults and adolescents to be seen in the cardiologist's office is for palpitations. Why is that? Why is that? Because, I'm sorry you coffee guys over there, but if you look at high schools and colleges and you put them on a map and then you put a map of Starbucks or other coffee makers, you'll usually find one within one to two miles and in many cases they're actually on the college campuses. The most common reason for palpitations is caffeine because we don't recognize that cappuccinos and frappuccinos and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and all the energy drinks. What happened to this girl is that she had her usual Mountain Dew. You don't always think about Mountain Dew having caffeine in it, but then she was gonna work out so she thought she needed an energy drink. Energy is a euphemism for caffeine. Anything that says energy, it means caffeine. It doesn't matter if that caffeine has come from a coffee bean or that caffeine has come from a guarana leaf. It's caffeine and the addition of caffeine in caffeine threw her right into SVT. All right, one of the last cases. It's a 20 year old who came in with difficulty sleeping. All right. It's been going on for the last three to six months. She swears there's nothing about depression. She's not anxious. Just doc, I can't sleep and it's driving me crazy. That's making me more fatigued. I'm having a harder time at work. Um, there haven't been any new medicines or all of, her, all of her labs are pretty normal. So what's the problem here? So you say, should I start you on Ambien? Would you like another sleeping drug? Honey, how much caffeine do you drink in the course of a day? She didn't drink four cups, she drank four pots. And that's not the most. I had a guy who drank 10 pots per day. But Dr. Rohr, that doesn't bother me. I can drink coffee and go right to sleep. Right, right. And that deep restorative sleep that you're supposed to be getting, you're not getting it. No. So I hope that I've kind of left you with at least a basic understanding of why a couple of questions in the office gives you so much information and will save you a ton of money and a ton of, t of testing by asking a couple of different things. What did you have to eat yesterday? In a day, how many servings of dairy do you get? Or how do you get your calcium or vitamin D in? 
in a day how many drinks and what kinds of drinks and what are the size of the drinks. I had one girl that came in, Dr. Rohr, I'm so anxious, you gotta help me, you gotta help me, I, I think I really need some Xanax. She came in with the venti coffee. How many of those you drink in a day, Mary Beth? She said seven. <laughs> how many drinks? What size and what are they made up of? And there is no true red juice, okay? If it's a red juice, it's a bogus juice. It's a, it's a water sugar cocktail. Even cranberry is not true cranberry juice. It's cranberry juice cocktail, and it's a cocktail for the reason because they add the sugar to it. There is no real red juice. And in a week, how much fast food do you have? Do you go out for? Unfortunately, it's way too much. And it's not just the obesity, but it's the fact that very, very seldom are you going to get enough of your fruits and vegetables if you're doing fast food every day. You're never going to have a teenager going in there and ordering milk with his Happy Meal. Mm, not happening. So how much in a week do you have for fast food? So hopefully I've given you a few examples of why asking a 24-hour diet history can give you a lot of good information. And I'll leave you with the choosemyplate.gov. I think this is the best thing that's come out because it's not rocket science. It's not that difficult. You put this plate in your mind of what you're supposed to be having, and we're done. We don't have to worry about how much of any one thing. You get fruits and veggies. You get a little bit of protein. You get a high complex carb, and you get a dairy. Add in a little bit of water, and we're good to go. Thank you.